Hello, I'm Bill Hessen for Prickly Pears, the oral history project of the Palm Springs Public Library. Today we're going to enjoy a conversation with an early Palm Springs winter resident who has lived here for many, many years now. She built her home here in 1919 and she's been a part of the desert scene ever since that time. And today she's going to share her memories of those wonderful years with us. Peg Wallace. Peg, uh, first of all, thank you for being with us today. Well, it's my pleasure. It's nice to have a chance to talk with you. I always like to talk, anyway. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning and give our all viewers right. a chance to uh, get acquainted with you. Uh, where were you born and where did I you go to school? I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I went to school at Marlboro School in Los Angeles. And uh, Marlboro in Los Angeles, was that in the downtown area? It was, in, at, it was moved out to West 3rd Street from Alvarado. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in there about the third year after they moved. Now, how did a girl from Grand Rapids happen to go to school in Los Angeles? Well, it was very simple. My grandmother spent every winter in Los Angeles, and the schools were closed due to the fuel shortage in World War I. Hmm. So we came out in 1918 and took an apartment on West 3rd Street, it was the region departments, about near what is now MacArthur Park, but it was Westlake Park at the time. And grandmother had a uh, suite of rooms at the uh, Clark Hotel. You must have been a very young girl then. I was 14, 14 at years the time old. when I came out. Did you like California? Very much. And grandmother had been to Palm Springs quite often during the years. And uh, so we went down for uh, to look it over because mother and daddy were quite interested in coming out for winters. And we bought the property in 1918 from Andy Pearl McManus on the corner which is now Arenas and Lugo and she bought five lots, and then they built a uh, guest house because we always had a lot of company mm -hmm. expected to have come to Palm Springs. Why did they come to Palm Springs first? Well, mainly because my grandmother had spent quite a few winters in Los Angeles over the early years. She had a suite of rooms at the old Lancashire Hotel, and then at the Alexandria, and then the Clark Hotel was new. Mm -hmm. So she took a suite of rooms there and she kept it the year round. And her companion was uh, her cousin, Aunt Mary Reynolds. And her family came from Leadville. Her Leadville, father, Colorado? Yes, and her father was a doctor. And her mother taught uh, uh, school oh. in Leadville. For goodness sake. Well, from Los Angeles then, she was would make trips down to Palm Springs? Yes, she in, had made in trips between in Between 1910 past. and 1920? Yes. And uh, so we came down uh, for uh, Easter vacation in 1918. And we bought uh, the five lots from Annie Pearl and started to build and we moved in in 1919. And I was put in boarding school. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how long it took to drive from Los Angeles to Palm yes, Springs in those days? Yes, approximately. We would leave quite early in the morning and we usually had lunch in Pomona and we usually got here about four o'clock in the afternoon. Did you drive your the van, own car? Yes, we drove the car, but there were no paved roads from uh, Redlands or Riverside on down. So all the way through the San Gorgonio Pass it was, and down into yes, the desert, it was, it was all dirt roads? All dirt roads. You must have wanted to live here awfully badly. Well, the, I don't think the family really <laughs> liked the climate in Michigan in the winter. Mm -hmm. And so, so you, to you built the home then that we're sitting in right now in 1919. Yes, this was a guest house and after uh, my father's death, mother sold the property in 1942 to Herb Sampson and it was made, before that she rented it to Mrs. Peterson and it became the class school. Hmm. And then later, uh, after my grandmother died, my aunt, Miss Reynolds, and mother moved over to the guest house. You mentioned a school in that location. What school was that? That was Lacoste School. And my son-in-law, John Sanborn, was one of the students there, one of the little boys that went there. And one year they had the float in the circus parade, at a desert circus, and they took the playhouse that my husband had built for my two older daughters, and it was on the float. I see. What grades were taught in the school, and who, who was the teacher? Well, the uh, teacher, uh, my uh, older daughter, went to uh, one year at uh, the Francis Stevens School, 
and uh, I believe Catherine Finchie was the teacher at the time. She taught everywhere. <laughs> she certainly did, and then later, uh, uh, my daughter was in the first grade, was out here for with my mother, and she was in the first graduating class from uh, the Nellie Kaufman Junior High, and my grandson, Alan Sanborn, was in the last class that graduated. <laughs> So you've seen a lot of changes I've in education. I've seen a lot of changes in, this, in the length of time I've been here. How many grades did they teach at uh, La Classe? At La Classe, it was just mainly uh, practically a, a play school. Oh, I see. A, for the, a kind of a preschool. The kin kindergarten and ages. When, when they left there, where, what did they have to do to go to school? I believe they went to Francis Stevens. Was Francis Stevens did it? Was it I believe the, then. I don't remember when John, when yes, Stevens when John it. was mm -hmm. young. But uh, did you go to school here at all, or? No, I did not. There wasn't. I didn't go to school at all here. What did a young girl here in the desert area do for fun? Were there many other people your age? Well, yes, there was uh, Charlotte Matheson Gardner. I mean Watson Gardner. I mean Charlotte Matheson Watson Gardner. <laughs> yes. And uh, there was uh, Margie Forline and Martha and Cassie Bell and uh, Bob Bell. And then there was Mary Helen. Stein, that um, Helen uh, Dottie built the uh, store for, mm -hmm. the children's store. And so you had some friends. Oh, I had lots of friends. I had Freddie Watson and Herb Sampson and John and Priscilla Chafee and the Streebies, and there were a lot of us growing up here. Did you go on a lot of picnics or horseback rides? Mainly riding, picnics or? and horseback rides. We went down to the, we go down to the Painted Canyon and up to Magnesium Falls and with... So you went quite a long way if you went all the way down yes, to Magnesium we did. Falls. Yes, we did. But uh, with horses and a day to do it in, there would have been no problem. Well, we went to Andreas and Murray and then I went several times up to the top of Palm Canyon from with Walter Bunker and Father. Oh. And uh, that was a very interesting trip. We camped out overnight. I bet it was. Was there a bench at that time oh, where, yes. the, where the store yeah. is now? Oh, yes. And then uh, Pester the Hermit lived up there. Oh. He was very interesting. Did you ever meet him? Oh, yes. I have pictures of him. What was he like? Well, he was very quiet and very polite, but it was hard to talk to. He probably, if he was a real hermit, to wonder where all these people came from. I know it, and there's, we went through the archway, they're still there, going up the old road. So you would go all the way to the top of Palm Canyon? Yes. On horseback? On horseback and camped overnight. Would would the top have been anywhere near where Highway 74 is It would is be now? about near Pinyon Flats, I believe. Around Pinyon Flats, yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. You had a lot of picnics and you found things to do. Oh, we found many things to do. We used to go down to uh, the station at uh, Indio eat lunch or dinner just for something to do. <laughs> we had to make our own fun. I, that's true, you would have had to. And uh, a lot of horseback riding, of course. And what did you do for the necessities of life in those days? What shopping facilities could well, you use? Well, there was, of course, Lick and Store, and, but very little other shopping. And, uh, of course, we had no refrigeration or uh, gas and lights. In fact, our house was the first house in Palm Springs that had gas and lights. Now the house uh, we're referring to is is uh, very close to uh, the base of the mountain in the area of kind of of the tennis club and Auntie Pearl's house. Yes, it's about three blocks to the west, mm -hmm. no, to the east of uh, of the tennis club. We have some pictures we're going to look at in a moment uh, to show a little of what it looked like in those days. But you, you now we talked to Francis Crocker a while back, and he told us a little about the. Uh, establishment of electric power in the area, but you had electric power before yes, you could just uh, run a connection in from a passing wire. We had a Matthews gas machine and a Delco light system in our garage. So you had your own generator. We had our own generator. We had to wind up the gas machine and as it w with big weights and as it went down it generated gas. We had uh, a gas machine. Yes. How did that work? Well, it worked. Uh, we had a uh, uh, big drum in the in the uh, yard, I mean down below in the earth, and then we wound this big uh, drum up, and as the drum descended, it generated the gas from the gas, or whatever it was, in, mm -hmm. the, in the Probably floor. it was a storage tank, that just the it was a big storage weights tank. pulled the top down yes. against the pressure, and as yeah, it pulled and it down, it created down, pressure had, in the lines. And we had uh, solar heat on the house. 
Solar heat? Solar heat. Now when was this? That was in 1919. You had solar heat? And then we had, uh, in each uh, bathroom, we had uh, uh, the regular gas tank, and then if we had dark days and get, couldn't get heat enough, we just simply lighted the gas and it would heat the water. Well, of course, here in the desert, heat isn't as much of a problem as it would have been in Grand Rapids. Well, no, it was <laughs> in the winter, though. It does get cold in the winter. What were the dates usually that you were here in the desert? Well, I was here uh, for every vacation from the time I was 14 till I graduated in 21. And then I was in college just one year. And uh, I wrote the family that I thought, doing the fact that I was engaged to be married, that I should spend the next year with them. And Father wrote back and said, what subject are you flunking? <laughs> and I told him French. <laughs> And he said, well, then come on out. You weren't too good at French. No, I was terrible. <laughs> so I came down here, and I spent the whole year, and went back in, in uh, May, early, no, was it later April, and Auntie Pearl and Marjorie and Uncle Austin gave a dance for me on top of what is now Robeson's uh, Jewelry. Now, where, and that where, was the office. For people who might not know, where is that located? Well, it's located about... Oh, 200 yards from the corner of Talkwitz McCallum and Palm Canyon. And Andy, that was near the old and adobe where Andy Pearl lived. And she gave a, a dance for you on the roof? On the roof, and she used a old wheelbarrow for a brazier, and we had the Victrola and danced <laughs> up on top of the roof. Well, that's marvelous. Who were some of the people who came to share well, that Well, there you? was uh, Phil Boyd, who was our first mayor, but he wasn't mayor then, and Charlotte Mathewson. And uh, of course, Marjorie, and uh, Freddie Watson, and uh, Marion Fulfruit, and Ted. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see. Uh, there was the young, whole, uh, quite a few of the, uh, well, there were Jim and, and Maury Gagey. Mm -hmm. And Jim became manager of the Desert Inn. Mm -hmm. And they were quite a so you group a of them. Stuart Abbott, of course from mm -hmm. living across the street. They built here in 22. It must have been interesting to watch people developing this area around you where there re really was nothing but There open was nothing, sand. nothing but desert, really. There were just, uh, well, the Fofas lived across the street from us and, and uh, their daughter was uh, Jean Evans that uh, just moved from Palm Springs a short time ago. I've known her all my life. Mm -hmm. And of course there were the uh, George and Lou Pop Bell and his wife and his three children. And uh, they were always very dear. Well, so they were really almost like family. George Pop Bell was just like family, with our family. I imagine he was. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few homes then, right, right in this little area near the base of the mountains. Well, kind yes. of around where the tennis club uh, well, was. Well, of course, Andy Pearl built in the, uh, there. And then uh, there was uh, the mountain house, we always called. That was uh, one of the. Uh, was it Meet and Chase's? No, Meet and Chase was there. We knew Mr. Idle and mm -hmm. all. And, uh, but uh, I think probably growing up, we had so much company coming down to spend time visit us, spend time with us. Willing to there. brave those roads. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, one time uh, they used to come down uh, train instead of having them get off at Whitewater Station, we told them to get off at Garnet. So we uh, hired and got a buckboard from Norman Farrah, one of the stables, mm -hmm. and we drove over, Fanny Edmondson and all, we drove over and picked up the ones getting off the stage, <laughs> off the train, and they couldn't imagine where they were going, because it was just a dirt road, you see. From there, you wouldn't have been able to see anything? No. Of the town? And uh, I was here when uh, they built the bridge across the warship and they're widening uh, the point, you know, Windy Point. Mm -hmm. And a very short time afterwards, it washed out, the first bridge. Mm -hmm. And then another time, Father took a group of us across the desert to Edom Hill, and we camped out overnight to be there to see the first cars wa uh, coming over I-10. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be, have been worth And we saying. also went a great deal up to Keyes Ranch. He was quite Keys a father. Ranch. He was Where? quite a he was quite a friend of my father's. Where was that? It was up in the Morongos and uh, above Morongo near Joshua Tree. Was there a road up in that area? It was there? a dirt road. There was a dirt and, road. And uh, 
his wife, his darling, she was a school teacher. And we used to go up there and see him, and he showed us some of his caves. And caves? Yes, with the hieroglyphics in it from the Indians. Those are still there, I think. They're right still there, there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really, uh, the lack of easy transportation didn't bother you didn't much? Didn't bother us a bit. No, we enjoyed it. Nowadays, if you have to walk to the corner, a lot of people grumble. Oh, I know it. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, the old two adobes south of me, uh, one belonged to Mrs. Trailer, and she had the two children. And the next was Miss Doolittle. And uh, we were very good friends of theirs. And, of course, the Abbots, when they built, and Stuart. And he, I believe, might possibly have had the first what turned into a mobile home. Hmm. He drove Mrs. Abbott and her companion, uh, Miss Collins, out from Jamestown where they lived. And uh, they had it parked in the, where now is all the church property, you see, that belonged to the Abbots, except for the Torrance house hmm. on the corner of Baristo that was there. We knew Mrs. Torrance. Mm -hmm. and Do you remember when uh, the first church activity began here? Or well, was the, that before you got here? Well, the first church activity that I can remember was when Bobby and Georgie were little and we were here and uh, Mother w uh, was asked to make a cake for the church Some supper. Some things never change. No, for the church <laughs> supper. So at that time we did have Filipino help and so it was for Christmas so he put on the cake Happy Birthday Jesus from Miss. <laughs> What what church was that? Was that, that was the community, community church, church? The community church. That was Presbyterian then, wasn't it? I believe it was, mm -hmm. or it was that non non denomination. We talked with uh, Vi Watson not too long ago. Oh yes, and I've Vi, known her for years. Vi talked about being the organist at the community church and then getting in her car and driving at top speed. So thank heavens there weren't any police looking to the Catholic church on the reservation. Yes. Yes. to uh, play the organ for them, mm -hmm. because yeah. she was the town's only organist. Oh, yes, I knew Vi very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. How large was the church then? Well, I don't remember, to be perfectly true, because I don't think I never went to it. Oh, well, okay. That's only fair. time I've been <laughs> in it, when they did, the old church was, I think, when Marvin Wade, uh, no, when uh, Marvin Sale died. Marvin Sale. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when did you first become a regular winter resident, or, or it, were you always? Well, we were, I was, every time I was able, we'll see, uh, after uh, I left college, uh, I was in Grand Rapids for a while, and then we used to come out every winter, and we lived in Pasadena uh, for about four years. Mm -hmm. That's and my old hometown. And I love it. And uh, we live right uh, off California Street on California Terrace mm -hmm. in my great aunt's house. Still a beautiful neighborhood. And uh, that was when we first really decided that we were going to make our home. And then we came out practically, well, we came out every year after that. I see. And of course, when Kathy was, and we had her, uh, we came out, and I came out during the winters with mother occasionally. And then, uh, of course, when she, we stayed out here. We were here. So all of your children were actually born back east. They all were born back east. I went back to have every one of them. <laughs> but you had no qualms about bringing them here to the desert. Oh, no. Any? No, we loved it. In spite of all the, the critters crawling around and mm -hmm. hazards and that kind and of thing. And I think one of the main people that I liked so much was Dr. and Mrs. Reed. And I believe was he the first doctor? He was the, not the first doctor. Dr. Coker was. He took care of my grandmother. Dr. Coker. Coker. I see. And uh, then I believe uh, when Dr. Coker died, Mrs. Coker married uh, Stuart Abbott's uh, cousin, uh, Duke Bradshaw. Oh. What, uh, when you wanted something to read, uh, I'm thinking now about the beginning of the library here, but before uh, there was a public library, there was a library I understand Unfeels. called Eileen's. On wheels. Remember that? Yes, I do. On well, wheels. What was it like? Well, it was a, uh, a box-like thing with the books on it, mm -hmm. and like a van, and they drove it around. And, and they drive this around town? Yes, they did. Now, was that the one that they called Eileen's Library? I believe or, it was. Or was that a different one? It might have been a different one, mm -hmm. but they did have the book on the library so, on wheels. 
Uh, now, when would this have been? In, in around 1919, 1920? Well, it must or? have been around, I would say, 1920, 1919, 1920, mm -hmm. because when I was coming down from boarding school. They actually had a bookmobile. Yeah, bookmobile. <laughs> I love that. I don't think anyone in our mm -hmm. library knew mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Do you remember who the people were who uh, No, I don't. I don't that think or? at that age you better pay much attention. I guess you really don't. That's we true. did mainly our own thing, you might say, mm -hmm. and, and that's why I was hesitant about even doing any recording. <laughs> because <laughs> when you I came back, uh, when, when you got married, uh, your husband must have liked it here pretty well, too. He did. Because he was, you kept he coming. Was in the, uh, he was a furniture manufacturer. In fact, he was the one that came out when the Biltmore was built. Oh. and installed all the furniture from Birkin Gay. The original Biltmore Hotel? The original Biltmore Hotel, and I went to the opening hmm. with his mother and father. His father was president of the Birkin Gay Furniture in Grand Rapids, mm -hmm. and he was with the furniture. And then they sold out to Simmons, and so that's why we came out to California, because he went in business with a friend of his in Fox Box up in Pasadena, mm -hmm. uh, up in Plotten. and. Uh, he was there for, we were there for four years, and then he went to work as a, a furniture designer in, uh, I've forgotten the name of it now. Hmm. And then after that, he was in poor health, and so he came right down here and lived all the time, except in the summer. Did he come here because of his health? Mainly, but also because the family were here, and we, mm -hmm. uh, mother was alive, and Let's we, see. uh, uh well, when you came back to this area as a married lady, life must have been a little different for you. Well, it was, but I had still had my friends from way pretty, back. Pretty much the same friends. Oh yes, we're still here. Yes, uh, and uh, Annie Pearl, I guess, would have been a very large part of this. Oh, Annie Pearl time. was very definitely a large part. In fact, I was reading Mother's Diary a short time ago, and uh, she was talking about Annie Pearl and the Comstocks and. The Abbots are all here for dinner, and then they went so on to some picnic and all, and I've got quite a few pictures of the, of the crowd with the picnics. <laughs> Your uh, daughter just handed me a couple of very small pictures, and a little bit later on when we take a break, and I'm going to move closer to the camera with these and see if we can't see them, because it's actually a picture, two pictures, of that traveling library. Oh, that you talked yes. about the book the the bookmobile service yeah and uh, in a little bit when we take a break yeah. I'm going to hold these close to the camera and see if we can possibly get close yeah. enough to get a picture of them because it's an amazing machine <laughs> it really is but people love to read I guess and they keep doing it oh we did and I know <laughs> grandmother I have quite a few of the old books that she had. Mm -hmm. And I still read them. I imagine so. Zane Gray and all. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Annie Pearl. Where did she live most of these years? Well, Annie Pearl, from the time I knew her, lived in the Adobe. And uh, several times she came east and stayed with us in Grand, in, on our cottage at Silver Lake. In fact, we were there when the Andrea Doria was sunk. Hmm. She was there. And then Marjorie. Uh, spent a winter back in Michigan, I mean, all the summer back in Michigan with us one year. What sort of person was she? Was she a good businesswoman? Annie Pearl? Mm -hmm. Well, she was very opinionated, and she was informed us when we started to bu build the house. Father drove what he wanted to show her what it was going to be. And she said, well, I don't like it at all. And Daddy says, well, I'm sorry I bought the property, and you are going to have to like it. <laughs> No, I was very fond of Annie Pearl, but she was very uh, sharp. One of strong opinions. Very tr strong opinions. Well, you must have been in the house then that uh, is now maintained by the Historical Society. Oh, yes. Um, I was in there many, many times. I practically lived there and had a lunch under the gay, gray barber. And Marjorie and I were very dear friends. And she was, well, she was, let's face it, she was doing most of Annie Pearl's work. <laughs> She'd have to find out uh, whether she we could go horseback riding or not. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, she was such a member of our family that we all, Daddy always called her Honey Child. How did she come to be known as Auntie Pearl? Well, I really don't know. We met her and immediately we had called her Auntie Pearl and Uncle Austin. Well, probably, well, you'd have been much younger then. So, I was 14. Yeah, you know, that would have been a natural. And Marjorie was... But the whole 13. town came to call her Annie Pearl. No, I know it. I don't know whether... I suppose I, it was an affectionate term. I think term. in those days, uh, we used to call close friends of the families by aunt and mm -hmm. uncle. 
because I had lots of aunts and uncles <laughs> <laughs> in my life that were no really a relation to us. How about the tourist industry in those days? Were there many hotels? Well, there was, uh, well, there was the uh, Del Talkwitz that was built, and then, of course, the Oasis was built, and the... Uh, you were right next door to the Oasis. Almost. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The original Oasis yeah. uh, was built, and that was built, it must have been built 23, because she had the party for me in 24. Mm -hmm. How about the Desert Inn? Was that here That when was first there. Came? We stayed, when we came down, we stayed at the Desert Inn at the Shabai, uh, Sidewinder Shebang. It was more or less what of What was a, the Sidewinder Shebang? Well, it was as I remember, it was very primitive. <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> well, it was like a... Uh, was it a party or... Uh, no, it was just a... It was a cottage. That, oh, I see. It was a place. Yes. Oh, you said shebang. I thought you no, were talking about a party. No, side shebang. They had the <laughs> cottages all named at different things. Oh, I see. And uh, it was uh, very rustic. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, have an opportunity to meet or be with uh, Nellie Kaufman very much? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I used to ride down there and go in, and, and I knew, uh, well, I knew the girls, uh, her children, but I was so much younger, mm -hmm. you might say, but I did know uh, Betty Kaufman's mother. Mm -hmm. and so you know that whole family probably. I knew the long. whole family casually, because mm -hmm. I was younger than some of them. And did you ever get out toward the north end of town? Well, uh, yes, we used to go out there. We, Of course, when the uh, El Mirador was built. Do you remember that? Oh, heaven, yes. I used to drive up right out there on a bike and coast back. I see. Oh, yes. So I you remember. actually could stand and watch it being built? I watched it being built. I watched the racket club. I watched the tennis club being built. I'll bet you went to the opening night party at the El Mirador. I probably did. <laughs> if you were here, I'm sure you must have. And... Uh, then my children used to swim in the swimming pool before it was uh, before World War II. Mm -hmm. Did you play golf after yes, they built that golf course? Yes, we did after a fashion on the uh, Palm Spring on the Desert Golf Course, the, well, the Desert Inn's Golf Course. The first one was Andrea, or uh, the Talkwitz, wasn't it? The I first mean, one was Kajiva. Yeah, they called it the Cane Breaks Course. It well, I in, remember uh, the Cane Breaks well. I was there many <laughs> times. <laughs> I think we called it the Mink and Manure Club. The, the, that's I right. Can remember yeah. right. But the El Mirador course, I understand, was the first course in. It time. was really. It was uh, uh, between tamarisk trees, and you drive down one row and have a green that was green, mm -hmm. and then you go back and go down the other side of the tamarisk and fill another hole. <laughs> and I played that. We talked to Culver Nichols about that, and he said that the builder of the course, who built it for P.T. Stevens, was a black man named Lawrence Crosley. Mm -hmm. Do you remember them? I've got a picture of him. Of the Crosleys? Mm -hmm. And that he operated it for a while. And, uh, but I didn't remember him too well, and just like I have, I remember the names, and then mm -hmm. they kind of... I bet you knew Culver and Sally Nichols. Yes, well. I did. <laughs> Very well. I did. And they lived there. They made their home finally in what was the pro shop at that old golf the course. The pro shop of the old golf course, and mm. then very up there. And of course, I watched the airport being built mm. and things like that. But during World War II, I wasn't here much of the time because I was back there and very active in Grand Rapids, very active in, in uh, well, I was a nurse's aide was the first one that got in my 3,000 hours. <laughs> I'm and, sure you uh, were busy. And, uh, when you were here in the, uh, uh, around the time, the 30s really, uh, uh, you must have been aware at least of the um, places where gambling was uh, oh, yes. an activity. At, it wasn't legal then, was it? That, that wasn't legal in those oh, days. Oh, no, no. It was nearly, well, it's now the old Elf Club. But it was there. Oh, it was there, sure. How many how many places were there where you could actually go and... Well, I know that because Helen Wertheimer was a good friend of my oldest daughter's. Hmm. And uh, I remember that. I now, used to go with the Near the Elks Club, that, would that be where the Elks Club is now? Yes. The Down same there. location. Mm -hmm. Then I believe there was one in Cathedral City. I don't know anything about that. 139 Club. And there was another one out on Date, uh, Date Palm. Date called, Palm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cove. I don't remember the name of it. Did you go to these very often? No, I didn't. I <laughs> went to the cane breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Culver told us that they would go to the Cove occasionally for dancing because they had a nice orchestra. Yeah. But he said that the owners of these places discouraged local people. Oh, they did. They didn't like this at all. 
They didn't. Mm -mm. Want, they didn't want you to be. They there. didn't want us to be there. They didn't want you to come and lose your money and get mad at them. No, <laughs> probably. Or report them or something or put like them out that. Of business. But they got along all right. You must have remembered too uh, a lot about the organization of the community when it incorporated uh, uh, the first committee and so on. Do you, do, were you at, at all active in that, or do you remember? No, I never time? was very active in anything out here. Mm -hmm. The only thing I really joined was the uh, uh, Eastern Star. Mm -hmm. You knew Phil Boyd, though, and he was very good. Oh, I knew Phil list. when he was very active, and I knew Phil before he was married. Mm -hmm. He was one of the group that we used to go around with. I see. Do you remember uh, at all the, any of the events uh, when people were talking about incorporating the community, how your family might have felt about that? No, I really don't. You just really weren't too politically. We weren't, I wasn't, you weren't a political I, I person. I was not a political person. In those days. And, of course, Mother belonged to the Women's Club. She was a charter member with Pearl. It was the Women's Club in those days, uh, did they have their own building where it is now? I don't know. It's uh, it's not far from you, right? Oh, now. I know it's it. Kind of right down around the I, corner. I was a member for a short time. Mm -hmm. When did uh, Auntie Pearl build the tennis club? Do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember, but I know I, I know she gave Ed and me a membership. <laughs> gave you one? Oh yes. Oh. She gave me one. Mother and Daddy belonged, and my grandmother belonged. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember the exact date. I see. The dates really didn't mean. Well, they don't. No. In those days. In those but it would uh, probably would have been about the same, same time as the racket club, I suppose. It was built before the racket club. Oh, the tennis club was before the racket club. It was built the before club. the racket club, wasn't it? I may be wrong on no, that. They'd be fairly close. Did you use these places, though, as a social uh, gathering I used a tennis place? club a great deal. You went there a lot. And did, uh, did they bring orchestras down then? Do you remember? No. We, we had the... Uh, uh, stream was running through there, you know, from the irrigation ditch mm -hmm. was running through there. And then once a year they used to uh, have a fish, fish for... Uh, mm -hmm. Fish fry. fry. Fish fry and we <laughs> catch them in well, there. How about uh, the lands around where your home is uh, now? Was there a lot of agriculture then? Well, uh, we were able to get uh, so many miners inches of uh, water we'd have to go up once a week and open the sluice gate at, at the foot of the hill and the water would run down and we'd flood the property where did the water come from talkwitz from talkwitz mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. did the stream run most of the year then it was uh, evidently because we of course i wasn't here in the summer that's true but you could actually go up there to the mouth of the canyon, and there was a, a sluice gate that could be opened. So that, well, we uh, we at the end of uh, our arenas, oh, I the see. sluice gate for the property was there. It ran right through the tennis club when it was first built. Oh, and this was used to to irrigate. Uh, irrigate. What? Yes, we were allowed to irrigate. Were there a lot of was was there a lot of agricultural development around your neighborhood here? They, the date palms started uh, down the valley. The experimental station started mm -hmm. down the valley, and uh, we were one of the first ones that had uh, the dates, the date, the regular date palms, in our yard. Because Daddy went down to the experimental station and bought them. Mm -hmm. That was before I was married. I remember the stories that Pearl McManus' father uh, brought water all the way from Whitewater at one time. Yes, he did, to, and, uh, and because I, he wanted to have large mm -hmm. agricultural development. Oh, he did. He had great. Oh, their property in back was all fig trees and grapefruit. In mm -hmm. fact, the original oasis uh, had loads of orange trees, and we had uh, uh, lemons and limes. And all these uh, grew successfully. Here. Oh, very, very successfully. Well, we trees had still great, do. big grapefruit trees in the yard. Mm -hmm. Get the big property. Yeah. Well, there was a flourishing business in those days. I think they grew a lot of figs too, didn't they? And oh yes. Annie Pearl had some beautiful figs in the back of her house, and we had some in our yard. I see. What are some of the other things you remember about those times that you thought were especially exciting or fun? Well, everything was exciting <laughs> to me in those days. But uh, Well, when you brought the kids back, uh, your children back, your own children, um, how did you make arrangements for them to go to school, or what sort of schools were well, available? Well, when they were, they were young, and they uh, went to uh, the Deep Well play school mm -hmm. that was a deep well ranch I see and uh, Frida May uh, Harvey stayed with us she was the teacher down there and she later uh, married uh, Ben uh, Chafee John Chafee's younger brother mm -hmm. 
And uh, did they? Well, as they got a little older, uh, how, how about elementary school? Were there elementary schools available? Was uh, Catherine Finchie open then? There was Kath There was oh. the Francis Stevens School that I remember, and then of course the high school, mm -hmm. and then the elementary school, which mm -hmm. was uh, Nellie Kaufman Junior High, mm -hmm. and before that they had to bust them up to Banning to school from the Francis Stevens School. Yeah. I, I guess your your young your children must have been just the right age they were too for young. education moving into yes, the area. Yes, they were too young. They didn't have to make that long trip no, every they day didn't. at Banning. No. How large were the schools then? Were you there many mean students? The, the, uh, I guess what I'm uh, asking is how many children there would have been in those days. I really don't remember in, in uh, junior high school uh, when Bobby graduated how Mm. Many there were. It was a small graduating class. Did you know Catherine Finchie well? Not well, no. But as a teacher, I knew her. You, you I uh, just when Bobby was at school there. I never knew her personally well. I see. I had many friends that did uh, know her well, like Louisa Sanborn and and uh, Helen and Jack Williams mm -hmm. and all. Do you remember anything at all about development uh, in as the valley began to grow? How they began to well, uh, I can decide remember, about land? I can remember going down to uh, Palm Desert when it was just uh, nothing. Mm -hmm. In fact, I used to go down to what is now Washington in 111 and uh, shoot quail with my father in the uh, grape vineyard. It was a friend of his that had the grape vineyard. And then, of course, I remember going down to La Quinta many times, mm -hmm. the old hotel, before it became what it is now. Was it still way around the corner, back yes. in the cove? Yes, right in the now? cove, and there were quite a few places whose friends of mine lived in back. I see. We used to go down quite well, often to La Quinta. There were a few Hollywood people who liked to go there because they were oh, real yes. hideaway. Oh, I know what there were, and of course, we were great many uh, pictures being taken here. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Hart, uh, Jack Holt. So many pictures. In fact, Mary Pickford, mother, I have a picture of mother with Mary Pickford. Really? That when we used to drive down and watch them take movies. Did you get to meet many movie stars? I met quite there? a few of them. Imagine. But to be perfectly truthful, they never <laughs> meant terribly much to me. Mother was an avid. In fact, I've got my grandmother's books of all the movies she ever saw. She used to have pro programs. And uh, she cut them out and put them in books. I must have at least. 20 books of the old movies okay, between 1918 okay. and uh, 1932, I believe. Do you remember going to the to movies at uh, in the auditorium at Catherine Finchie? No, I do not. Earl Streeby used that for his auditorium mm -hmm. when he first I remember going movies. to the first movies we ever had here, I mean, and so I might have gone there. You probably did. Do you remember when he opened uh, oh, the Oh, yes, Village I remember where he, when he opened the, uh, the movies. And... Uh, that must have been interesting. Oh, it was fun because we felt we could walk down so easily from where I live and not be the least bit afraid. We never even thought of locking our houses. You never locked your houses? Never at night. We'd walk down to the movie or something and we never thought of locking our houses. There really wasn't very much crime no. in the area then? No, there wasn't. Or anything we felt worried. I would walk any place around this area. Mm -hmm. well, you, uh, in those days, I think the town probably didn't even have a police force, did it? I don't know about the police force, but my father was a volunteer fireman. Was he? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I can remember that well. Well, there, there would have been those city-sponsored And city they were such good friends. Them. They were very good friends of my father and mother of uh, the senior Hickses and uh, the Zadi and, mm -hmm. and uh, you remember Ed Bunker. Zaddy? Oh, remember I, Bunker? oh, I know her all my life, <laughs> practically since I was 14. She must have been an exciting woman. She was very, very interesting. She was lots of fun. And then uh, I used to go with Father and Walter Bunker, uh, Ed's brother. Mm -hmm. uh, and I set up to the top out of Palm Canyon, way up at the top. Where were some of the popular destination points that you'd go to when you would ride? Well, I think mainly we liked to go to Riverside, and but mainly we went to Painted Canyon out of Mecca. And we'd go down to... Uh, You've mentioned that several times. That seems a long that way is, off. Oh, yes, it is. It's, it's Mecca. But the ride... Perfectly but it, beautiful. It was worth riding horseback that well, far. No, we didn't ride horseback. We oh, took you the could car. Ride there. Oh, yes. Oh, well, except when it was flooded. Mm -hmm. Then we couldn't go in. Several oh, times see. we went down and they'd had a big rainstorm. We couldn't get in there. You couldn't get in. 
That's now you mentioned near Mecca. How do you find that? Well, it was down uh, uh, on the north side of the, toward the Salton Sea. Mm -hmm. The Salton Sea would have been established. Oh yes, that was established. By the time you first yes. began coming, it, yes. that began I think around 1906. I think uh, when they had they had a trouble down there and mm -hmm. it broke through and formed With the Salton Sea, the Colorado. You didn't have much in the way of lakes around here then, did you? No, we didn't have any lakes really? except the one up in the mountain. Yeah. So you would, uh, if you wanted to swim in a large uh, or go boating or something, we you wouldn't. would have had to go that far. The only, well, I tell you, Lois Kellogg had the first swimming pool in Palm Springs. Lois Kellogg? Yes. The first? You mean even ahead of the hotel? Yes. Oh, yes. It was above, uh, was above ground. And uh, she lived on uh, Palm Canyon, I would say approximately where... Ramon comes in, and she had a big house, and she had beautiful Russian wolfhounds. They were the Kellogg's from Battle Creek. So. And she would let some of us come down. Marjorie and I went down and went swimming in the what I think is the first swimming pool. For heaven's sake! Now that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating. She was a very interesting person. She must have been. Well, the Kellogg family is so well known all over America. Oh, I know. Really and John was here for a while. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. boys, and I knew John well. They were founders of the Polytechnic School in uh, Pomona. In Pomona. And had a beautiful yes. home, as I recall, on the hillside up uh, looking down over Pomona. Yeah, they're, uh, and of course, then, they're uh, a very delightful people. They became involved with the scripts. And, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I knew, uh, I didn't know the scripts. I knew Scripps Clark, one mm -hmm. of the nephews. Well, when she had a swimming pool, uh, everybody else must have decided they wanted one, too. Well, I don't know. I, there were a few... I think well, that was Barbara. Oh, what was it? my daughter's uh, had a friend, and I know they had a swimming pool, but it was much later. When did you build yours? You have a nice I pool. I didn't. There. We didn't build uh, this until I would say offhand about uh, twenty-five years ago. I see. No, it must have been more than that. It mm. was. Uh, yes, about twenty-five years about ago. Twenty-five years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's that makes it. I wanted to put one in, reason. and uh, mother didn't want a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she'd given this house to sister and me when uh, my grandmother died, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I wanted one. And mother would get very upset. She didn't want a swimming pool, so I said, "Fine, <laughs> I won't have one." And shortly before she died, she said, "Peggy, you know, I know one of the first things you're going to do after I die." And I said, "What, mother?" She said, "You're going to put a swimming pool in." Put a swimming pool in. So I did. How about development of new stores where you would go shopping along Palm Canyon Drive? What well, our main place was Robinson's at the Desert Inn. Mm -hmm. Robinson's was, at the Desert oh, Inn. Oh yes. Now was that affiliated with Robinson's? Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh yes. When, when did that? Uh, well, it was uh, about the time Kathy was married, because I know we got a lot of her things for her. That was mm -hmm. uh, quite a long time ago. That, that would have been a while. Yeah, but they had it, a store there, and then uh, Helen uh, Kaufman had a, had a uh, store at the Desert Inn, a gift shop, and mm -hmm. uh, I know my husband had a hobby of uh, making things like coffee tables that he made, used to make lamps and uh, for children and uh, the uh, uh, things to hang your clothes on and she would have like an elephant's trunk or oh. a giraffe's neck and all and then he used the for uh, the shades for the lamps he would uh, use uh, the fairy tales like Goldilocks and the three bears and all and mm -hmm. then he had parchment inside and he made quite a few or, uh, and he would sell those. Yeah, he had a hobby. He had the, I call it the bar in the garage. It's never had a car in it. He had that for his workshop. Where did you take your cars for service and repair in those we days? We didn't. I think probably up at Riverside or Los yeah. Angeles. Zaddy Bunker had a garage. I think, yes, he had. Time, they had so. a garage. And, and, I've and been told the family she was, might have used it, but. They said she was perfectly capable of getting underneath the car and fixing oh, it. Oh, she could do anything. Know. Zaddy could do anything. <laughs> Including fly an airplane. And then another thing we used to do a great deal, we used to walk over to the old uh, bathhouse where the spa is now. Oh. And uh, we, they had two different things, compartments, one for the men and one for the ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'd have house parties, we'd all go over and try to get 
one that had the main spring coming up mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, had wood all around it and up the sides and we force ourselves down through the water and let go and we bob right up again from the force of the springs oh for goodness sake it was fascinating you, you'd be you'd be able then to get right over the main spring that, oh yes that fed the bad yes house. we always try to get the one place and of course it was a little primitive and you see quite a few of we call them water bugs but i think they were just <laughs> cockroaches running up and down the wall mm -hmm. and uh, the division between the men's and ladies came up high enough so there was no looking mm -hmm. but uh, we tried to throw some of the silt over when we had house parties down here <laughs> and uh, we used to do a great deal of that uh, some of my friends from Marlboro school we'd come down for easter vacation and some of the boys from the Hoover Military School would come down, and whose sisters I knew and got mm -hmm. to know them. They camped down on uh, Talkers Creek. Oh. And we'd go down and have breakfast with them, and then they'd come back and have dinner with us, and we'd roll up all the Navajo rugs in the big living room, and with a player piano or the Victrola, we'd dance. Mm -hmm. So you had parties. We had loads of parties. Mm -hmm. Well, that bathhouse must have been fascinating. Did they it have was. hot? Did they have hot mud that you could get into? Well, it was silt. Powder? It was not muddy. I it was see. just like a sand silt mm -hmm. on the bottom. How much did the? They belonged to the Indians, I it think. It belonged right? to the Indians, and Ramon used to be the custodian of it. What did they charge you to take a bath there? Well, as I remember, I think it was probably twenty-five cents. Twenty-five cents. Yeah. It's a little different now. Because <laughs> I used to ride his horse. I I really. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, Daddy bought me one, and and uh, because he didn't like the setup with Ramon, oh. and uh, he thought it was I wasn't paying him enough to ride his horse. So mm. uh, there was this uh, cowboy. Well, his name was Charlie, and he was a hair lip man. He had a wife. And they used to fight terribly. It was camped. You see tents all along, uh, Palm, I mean Indian Avenue, you know, mm -hmm. the Sycamores. And uh, so Daddy bought a horse from him. And and uh, about two weeks later, Daddy said, "Are you sure, Charlie, that the uh, horse isn't stolen?" He said, "Gun, them in Charlie, you damn well it's not stolen." <laughs> <laughs> and about two weeks later, uh, his wife ran him out of town. Oh. And he took off with a buckboard and a and his <laughs> horses and dashed out of town. I never saw him after that. It must have been an interesting bird. Charlie Wise was his name. But there was no problem then having horses and other livestock around. Oh no, we no we had to uh, uh, fence in all the property to keep the Indians' horses from getting in. Keep them out. And the, yeah. did the Indians maintain the tribe then, or the, the herd of horses? Themselves? Evidently, because they were wild Indian. They were the Indian horses, and they were allowed to roam all over. In the early days, mm -hmm. and we knew quite a few of the Indians. We knew Potencio mm -hmm. and and uh, Ramon and Bellardo and mm -hmm. Daddy was quite a friend of the uh, mm -hmm. tribe down there. How about dining out, uh, restaurants? Well, when we dined out, primarily when we first came here, we went down to uh, uh, Indio and we ate at a place that had marvelous chop suey, and all. The only sign in front of the thing, it said Eats. And, and you went all the way to Indio? we go this. down to Indio and either eat at the station or we'd eat at uh, uh, the Chinese place. Someone has told me that there was a dollhouse oh. before the dollhouse. Yes, there was. It was down here on either Coila or Bellardo. And I helped uh, Ethel and George Streeby. They had it. And... Uh, uh, they had the tables covered with book covers. Hmm. And I used to go down there, John Chafee, we used to go down there and help the, and put the covers and help to put them onto the first aisle house. Now, where was that located? It was on the corner of Arenas, and I believe it's either Coila or, or, or Bellardo. I oh. think it was Coila. That would Just have been down very here. close to you then. You could yes, have easily walk there. Yeah. And they called that the dollhouse. They called that the dollhouse, and they moved up on... Uh, where the old dollhouse was, and I called that my home away from home. Mm -hmm. We go have a late lunch, mm. Ed, my husband and I, and we get it a lot cheaper than with an hour later for dinner. <laughs> we have the same thing. And uh, oh, I 
that was my really my home away from home. Did you um, follow them when they moved out to the north part of town? Oh, you mean down uh, uh, where? Out the, oh, yes, that's where, where Sorrentino's is now. I think yes, that's where Sorrentino's. That's I lived there practically. Mm. I practically. Had. Sounds like one of your favorite places. <laughs> it is. It was wonderful. And then the Saddle and Sir line, and of course Chi Chi. Mm -hmm. And but do you that, remember the opening of the Chi Chi or when they when they first began to bring big name entertainment? Well, I remember that well, and then in fact. Uh, my uh, uh, Cocky's uh, uh, had her rehearsal dinner there. Louisa and Jerry Sanborn gave Cocky and John the rehearsal dinner oh. down at Chee Chee's. I see. They put, oh, and one time it was pretty terrible. <laughs> uh, my number must have been very near the telephone number to the Chee Chee's. And uh, we got so sick and tired of answering the number. <laughs> and one time, I think it was for New Year's Eve, and they kept ringing and ringing, and finally, in desperation, we said, yes, uh, I'm sure you will have a very good reservation for you. <laughs> and how much we did that once over the phone, it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and then, of course, I used to, the, getting out the first issue of the Limelight years ago with Priscilla and John. Oh, were you Tafee. involved in doing that? Oh, yes. I, uh, I helped them to a certain extent on the first issue. The Limelight was the first newspaper. Yes, it, it was the first newspaper, and I tell you who has some old issues, if you're interested, is Marion Leno. Hmm. Mr. Harold Leno. I see. But you helped uh, the Chafees then get the first issue? The first issue out. I can remember oh, it well. How often did they publish it? I'm not quite sure. I think it was once every two weeks. It couldn't have been too often. Because no. Just getting it printed would have been hard. I know it. I imagine they I did. helped them kind of get some of the news and all, and, and I knew them quite well. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had a lot of fun here, haven't you? Oh, I've had years? more fun than anything, and I'm <laughs> glad I'm back, and and uh, I, the only way I'm going to go out of here is feet first. <laughs> <laughs> you live here full-time now, then? I live here full-time now. I, I do see. go back possibly three weeks in the summer to mm -hmm. see my children and my 15 great-grandchildren. Enjoy the lakes again. Enjoy the <laughs> lakes and the that would be sort of beautiful. It was lovely back there this last month. It was beautiful. We were up in the Poconos and mm. all and it was lovely. Well, well you've, you've given us some pictures I want to show um, and what I'm going to do is stop the camera for a minute now okay, so we can fine. bring it in closer and try to see these pictures and then as we look at them you can tell us what we're looking at. Okay, fine. I think it would be kind of interesting for our viewers to see those so be patient for a moment and we'll be right back with some pictures for you. But we're back now and Peg what I'm holding up right now is uh, a picture of the traveling library you were telling us about. Oh that was the Vagabond bookshop. Book, the, the, I think they call it the Vagabond. The Vagabond bookshop. Uh, I'll bet you that they sold books too. Oh, they did. Yeah, and, they and sold the, books and they rented books. So it wasn't just a library service. No, it wasn't. We've got another picture of it. Let me get it up here and see if I can get it in the, into our scene. And we don't have a date on the pictures, but I would estimate from looking at the vehicle that um, is carrying them around, it must have been around 1925. It was in the 25s. I know mm -hmm. it was in the uh, 20s. Okay. And then we have uh, here some other uh, pictures. These are a little bigger that we can look at. Now this one here um, that is, is your house. It's a picture it says, of the uh, house I'm in now, <laughs> which was our guest house. And this was uh, February 12th, 1921. Yeah, that was. And this is a picture of the house we're sitting in right now as we do the interview uh, with Peg Wallace. And uh, you can just get a little bit of an idea of what it looked like in those days in 1921. It's been a mm -hmm. Bill and uh, here's another that you've given us. This is you and some of your friends. And uh, let's see, that, let me get, let me show it to that, you so you'll know what it that is. That is a, a picture of uh, my grandmother, my husband, my two children, and mm -hmm. oh, what was Eleanor's name? Eleanor Cook, I think it was. Now this would be looking up towards uh, the base of the mountain. It was t looking up towards next door to us. Right, uh, where right we're located next door now. to us. And if you look around here now, all you see are hotels and development yeah. and very few uh, acres. I think I'm the only privately owned house on the street. I th I'll bet you are at this mm -hmm. point. Except the uh, uh, Torrance house on the corner of Baristo mm -hmm. and uh, Lugo. And this is an interesting picture of the little girl. That's a um, picture of my uh, nephew and my daughter. And uh, Bobby. sort of in color. Yeah. Uh, the, the color when these were taken, of course. No, mother, were, uh, mother tended it. She had attended herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she tended herself. But this would be about the same area? 
It is the same area right next door to us. Except it was on that. Arenas, backing up on our property. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted our viewers out there to see those because I wanted them to be aware of the changes and the amount of development that has taken place in this Always. area. Your, uh, your house is interesting. And uh, Peg, I think we're going to let you relax now okay. while uh, we take the camera and uh, look a little bit at this house that was built in 1919. Okay, fine. Because the architecture is interesting. Do you remember who the architect was or if your father had My one? father kind of drew it and William Blakey, Bill Blakey, built it. I see. And he uh, also built Mrs. Spire's house, which was just torn down mm -hmm. on the corner of Bellardo and, uh, no, Aquia and... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Talks McCallum. There was another uh, house I wanted to ask you about too before we stop, and that was the O'Donnell house up on the hillside. Oh, the Remember O'Donnell. Remember when that was built? Yes, I do. It was built approximately, well, Doris was in school with us, so it must have been built in the uh, early, uh, I would say, around 20. One or twenty-two. Twenty-one or twenty-two. Approximately. Did you know the O'Donnells? I knew the O'Donnells. I knew his first wife very well, mm -hmm. and I went to I went to Marlboro School with Doris, his daughter, and then I knew her older sister Ruth. I see. And I used to be up there quite a lot, but it might possibly have been in the uh, early twenties uh, uh, to mm -hmm. twenty-two or twenty-three. And I'll bet when he built O'Donnell, you played golf there. Sometimes. Well, no, I didn't play golf there. You weren't a golfer at that time. No, I wasn't a golfer. <laughs> and uh, after I left uh, Marlboro when Doris was there, then I went east to college. Mm -hmm. Then I came back here and spent all of 23 back here in 24, and then I went home in 24 to mm -hmm. be married, back to Grand Rapids. <laughs> Peg Wallace, you're a marvelous person. And thank, thank you, you for sharing some of those memories of those wonderful days I with probably us. should have mentioned uh, Dr. and Eleanor Reed, though, because they were just part of our family. I think we did mention them. Uh, did he, he became one of the important doctors Oh, he was. Community. He had the first hospital. I see. He had uh, two operating rooms and four patients. A where, room for where was four that located? Patients. It uh, part was, uh, you know, uh, well, it was up on North Palm Canyon, and uh, it was think it was called, part of it was later called the Pepper Tree Inn. Oh. And uh, he had his offices there, and uh, oh, what was the name of the podiatrist? She just died recently. Stevens. Mm -hmm. uh, had a, her office in part of the building at I one see. time, and uh, he took care of my grandparents, mm -hmm. my grandmother, and my father, and my children. Well, me. <laughs> so I knew him up to so that. that was really the first from, medical care. I think he came in 27. Mm -hmm. We have some records of him and uh, other people that we've talked with. And then they had a so. beautiful home up in Estes Park, uh, and they had they raised Palmino horses. Uh, there were really people here in Palm Springs from all over the United States. Oh, they States, were weren't they? all over the United States. And it must have been exciting and interesting to know them. Oh, it was terribly exciting, and I was so happy when Cocky and John were married because I was so fond of Jerry and mm -hmm. Louisa. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of nice when it works out that oh, way. Oh, it's nice when it works out that way. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and well, being with us. it's been my pleasure. And sharing these memories with us. Thanks. We've been talking with Peg Wallace, who is um, a pioneer Palm Springs winter resident, really, uh, chatting with her in her home, which was built in 1919, very close to the foot of the mountain, and just a little bit off Arenas Road. I'm Bill Hessen for Prickly Pears, the Palm Springs Public Library's oral history project where we try to share with you the memories of some of the people who were here in those wonderful times. But it was fun. I had a wonderful time growing up down here. I wish I had been here.